All right, here we go. Last lecture of your derivative rules unit is on the chain rule. And I pose the question if we can find the derivatives of the following functions. First one is 2x squared plus 3, quantity squared. You know, yes, you can take the derivative of f by distributing things, getting 4x to the fourth plus 12x squared plus 9x, and then you can take the derivative of that. However, if we have something more complicated to a bigger power, it's going to take me forever to distribute all of this. And maybe I know like the binomial theorem, but it's not a binomial, so it's like a trinomial, which means you can't use Pascal's triangle. It just makes it really complicated. So I could do it in theory. I just don't want to. And then the last one, I actually can't. Sure, you may think, oh, well, can't you rewrite it as uh, 5x to the fourth plus 3 to the 1 half? But unlike squaring things, I can't distribute this one half. So I can't rewrite this so that it's a bunch of terms being added together. So I, as of right now, I don't know how to take the derivative of this. So what we need is we need a rule to help us for these. And this is where the chain rule comes into play. The chain rule deals with derivatives of compositions of functions. F of G of X. Well, let's look at these previous two. Let's make sure we understand what a composition of functions is. For this guy, I would consider g of x, my inside function, to be the stuff in the parentheses. And my f would be considered kind of just like the to the fifth power, or the parentheses to the fifth, or just like a big x to the fifth. And what I could do is I can rewrite this as f and g, and if I compose f of g, you can see how you just plug in this where x goes, right? That's the composition. It's the same thing here. We have the g, which is what we'd consider an inside, which would be that stuff, and then we have the f, which would be like x to the one-half power, or the square root of x. Okay, we'll talk about that more, but that's what I mean by f of g. Okay, it's an outside function and an inside function. Well, the derivative of f of g is equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x. The way I like to think about this, the derivative of a composition of an outside function and an inside function is the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, times the derivative of the inside. Okay? Well, this g that I said this stuff is, I'll just call that my inside function. The f I'll call my out. And we're going to take the derivative of these three using the chain rule. I'll, I'll show you exactly how I want you to think about things, okay? So let's find the derivative of those previous three using the chain rule. Step one is to identify which is out, which is in. What is your composition of functions, okay? 
Well, when we have parentheses, it's actually kind of easy to see. We see that the square is on the outside. And we see that the 2x squared plus the 3, that's on the inside. Sometimes if we find the inside first and write down the inside, we'll be able to understand where our outside is going to come from. So the inside function, or my g of x, is 2x squared plus 3. My outside function is this quantity being squared. Sometimes I like to think about it as just like a big red x being squared. It's whatever is in the parentheses being squared. Well... Using the chain rule, I would take the derivative of my outside. The derivative of x squared is 2x. However, it's 2 big red x. So it's really just 2. And then this big red x is 2x squared plus 3. That's why it's like derivative of the outside. Leave the inside alone. And this is to the first power if you want to think about, you know, 2x to the first power, times the derivative of the inside. The inside function, 2x squared plus 3, that derivative is 4x. So I found this derivative using the chain rule, and it's the exact same as the derivative I found through distributing. 16x cubed plus 24x. 16x cubed plus 24x. So we have an alternate way. Now, I would probably not do the chain rule for this type of problem because it's just so easy to distribute. But just to show you how it's the same, what I would do is the chain rule for the following functions that I need to take the derivative of. So let me shrink this, and I'll show you the next one. Yeah, there we go. So first identify the inside function and the outside function. What's the inside function, Ms. Coffee? Perfect. What would I say the outside function would be, Mr. Gordon? Exactly. This entire thing to the fifth power, or a big X to the fifth. Well, to take the derivative, we would... Take the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone. The derivative of x to the fifth is 4x, or sorry, 5x to the fourth. So it would be 5. Instead of x, we're talking about the function, the inside function. Derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone. To the fourth, there's that outside derivative times the derivative of the inside, 12x squared minus 6x plus 2. That's the derivative. Messy, it's long, but it's the derivative. I can plug in x values and get slopes of tangents to f. So you guys do it for the last one. We have the square root of 5x to the fourth plus 3. Identify the inside, identify the outside, and go from there. Do the problem. Put your phone away.
Derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, times the derivative of the inside. Check your answer with a neighbor. So when I take the derivative of the outside, the outside is x to the one half, I get one half x to the negative one half. Instead of x, we leave the inside. So derivative of the outside, leave the inside, times the derivative of the inside, that's 20x to the third power. Then if you want to rewrite to simplify, you can multiply the 10 and the one, uh, sorry, the 20 and the one half to be 10. You can leave the x cubed, and then you can write this as 5x to the fourth plus 3 to the, to the positive one half, or root 5x fourth plus 3. Okay, questions? Yes? Um, yeah, the top is fine, just of course, and we'll, we'll see with some others. We need to be prepared to make it look like this. Ms. Griswold, question? You thought it couldn't make a negative power? There it is. Okay. No worries. No worries. Anything else? Any other questions? It's the derivative of the outside. That's like this stuff to the one half power. That's one half this stuff to the negative one half. You think of that stuff as being a different variable, an x or a y. Okay. Sometimes that makes things more complicated, though. Simplify the derivative of the out, we should not try and make it over a fraction to get rid of the negative exponent, just leave it the way it is. No, no, see, this is this is the simplified one where I would write one over two roots five x to the fourth plus three, but then I have the twenty divided by the two, which gives me the ten. So I did rewrite it to make it a positive exponent. Okay. Right here. Okay. Got it? Yeah. And then I just moved the 20x cubed to the top. 20 divided by the 2 gave me the 10x cubed to the okay. top. Cool? All right. This is simple. Do this real quick. Once you've done things like this, you won't have to distinguish the out and the in. You'll just be able to go. Mr. Tabbit, Trico, you guys get it? What do you get? Let's go, Tabbit. Good. All right, that's it. That's Y prime. Questions? 
we will have rules and rules. We'll have x squared times 2x cubed minus 3 to the fourth. If you wanted to, you could take 2x cubed minus 3 and distribute it out four times. I wouldn't want to do that. I don't want you to do that. Instead, you'd have to take the derivative of this using the product rule with the chain rule inside the product rule. Yep. So, this is your first guy, this is your second guy. I can't distribute the x squared in there, it's being taken to the fourth power, so don't do that. This is as simplified as it can get, you just have to take the derivative of using the product rule. So, to do that, we get f prime g. plus g prime. To take the derivative of g, I have to use the chain rule. I have an outside, which is like an x to the fourth, an inside, which is 2x cubed minus 3. So the derivative of g would be the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, times the derivative of the inside. But don't forget to multiply by f. Well, how about that? Especially for these problems, you will see these problems on your test, and you'll see them on your review too. They won't give you this answer as a multiple choice you know, solution. You have to be able to simplify this to be just, you know, a product of two things. So this is the derivative, yes, but let's go through simplifying this. I would probably multiply the 4, the 6x squared, and the x squared together on this one. That's something that I can do right away. I can't. I don't want to distribute this to the 4th. I don't want to distribute this to the 3rd power, so don't. Just leave it to the fourth and leave it to the third. I'll show you what the nice simplified answer would look like. So that's 24x to the fourth times 2x cubed minus 3 cubed. Okay? Looking better already. However, I can factor. I have two items, this item and this item. They both share a 2, an x, and three 2x cubed minus 3s. So I will factor out 2x times 2x cubed minus 3 cubed. So I'm dividing it from these two terms. When I divide it out of my first guy, I'm just left with 1, 2x cubed minus 3. And sweetly, I will take your phone if I see it again. If I take it out of the second guy, this becomes 12x cubed times just 1, I'm pulling out all of the 2x cubed minus 3s. Well, I can now simplify this to be 14x cubed minus 3. This is the derivative. This is the answer choice you will see on a text. So you need to go from there to there. It's not that bad. You just need to practice. Okay? Okay.
Well, just be careful. It's not that bad. Just be careful. Calculus is 80% algebra. Calculus. <laughs> I started in algebra, and whenever the opportunity arose, I said, I'll teach calculus. All right, look at this one. Now, this is a rule and a rule. These are two rules here. But which rule do we do first? The chain rule goes first. The outside function is the x to the fifth. The inside is the quotient. So the derivative would be the derivative of the outside first, leaving the inside alone. Don't forget to subtract 1 times the derivative of your inside. So, this is your derivative. This is an answer choice on a test. Okay? Simplify your x's and your numbers. Then, what you could do is multiply this 5 over 1 by this 4 over 2x plus 1 squared. That gives you 20 over 2x plus 1 squared then you can rewrite this as 2x minus 1 to the 4th over 2x plus 1 to the 4th. Combining your 2x plus 1 gives you 2x plus 1 to the 6th. Yeah. Yeah. I would like you to practice a couple, you know, maybe two or three, maybe four, maybe on the odds, just to see what your book gets you down to. But then, you know, if you want to just make sure you understand the outside and the inside, get the correct derivative the first time around, that's, an, that's the most important part. Okay? All right, trig functions with the chain rule. Before we get into it, we need to understand the difference between y equals sine squared x and y equals sine of x squared. Is there a difference? Yes. 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 This, I don't want red. Sine squared x is sine x times sine x, or it's all about where the parentheses are, sine of x squared. Okay, the reason why they write it like this is just to 
save ink, I guess. And also the reason why they write it like this is so they don't get confused with this. This is sign of x squared. These are both compositions of functions. Just the outside and the inside are different for each. So let's find the derivative. Let's find y prime of those two. Go for it. The key is to rewrite it using parentheses so that you notice the outsides and the insides. The inside is usually inside the parentheses, the outside outside of it. Derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, times the derivative of the inside. For both of them. Derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, times the derivative of the inside. Mr. Trico, you got the first one? I think so. Oh, sorry. Think Ben. Trico was here. Yeah, um, think Ben. My bad. Correct. Mr. Ruzaga. Yeah. Yep. But we're using the chain rule. And we get two sine x cos x. The second one, can't use the product rule. Make sure we know that this is not like sine times x squared. Thank goodness that's on our bell. The outside function is the sine. We would take the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, then multiply it by the derivative of the inside. The outside function can be a trig function. Cool? Let's do some more. You'll see lots of trig functions with chain rules. Like these. Secant cubed of x and tangent of x to the fifth. My step one would be to rewrite them if they don't have parentheses, to use parentheses. That way you can really see the outside function and the inside function. Derivative of the outside, the outside is like the x cubed. Derivative of x cubed is 3x squared times the derivative of the inside, secant x tangent x. You can simplify this to be 3 secant cubed x tan x. That is the slope generating function for secant cubed of x. Second one, the tangents on the outside, derivative of tangent is 
secant squared, leave the inside alone, times the derivative of the inside. Don't multiply the x to the fifth by that 5x to the fourth. You can't do that. The x to the fifth is owned by the secant function. It's just, it just has to be taking the secant of it before you can do anything with this 5x to the fourth. So this is actually how you would leave this. Maybe you rewrite it so you have the 5x to the fourth first. Okay. Repeated application of the chain rule. Might not just have two functions being composed. You might have three or four. Let's go back up to the chain rule. Instead of F and G, you might have F, G, and H. You might have F, G, H, and K. The first example we're going to do has three. The second one has four. It's the same thought process, though. Derivative of your outermost, leave the inner inside alone, times the derivative of your next outermost, leave the inside alone. Start on the inside and work your way out. You go outside in. Uh, outside. outside in. So it's the derivative of F, leave G and H alone times the derivative of g, leave h alone, times the derivative of h, work outside in. Do we still need that? Yeah. There. We got to get these through these two examples, so don't leave as the bell rings. And then there's going to be more examples, of course, that you'll have to watch online. But this is just intro. Mr. Jesperson. So would you do that and then find HX times U of HX times No, that's it. This is it. This is the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, times the derivative of the next piece, leave the inside alone, times the derivative of the last piece. It's the same as this. Derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, times the derivative of the inside. Okay, ready? Here we go. Sine cubed of 4t squared. Can be written as the sine of 4t squared all being cubed. The outside is a big X cubed. The next outermost piece is the sine of X. The inside piece is the 4X squared or the 4T squared. So we work from outside in. So we have 3 times, leave the inside alone, squared. That's the derivative of x cubed. Times the derivative of sine, cosine. Leave its inside alone. Times the derivative of the innermost piece. Maybe multiply the 8t and the 3 together, and that's it. This one, really quickly. I could rewrite this as sine of all that stuff being squared. Don't worry about the fourth. Just leave the fourth out there, right? You just don't worry about the fourth. Then the derivative of the outside is a big X squared. That's two. Leave the inside alone to the first power. Times the next piece is sine times the next piece is the x to the fifth 
leave the inside alone, times the last piece is the 3x plus 2. That's the derivative. Okay? There will be application problems I will do on the rest of the video. So watch. We can find the second derivative using the chain rule. Secant cubed of pi x. The outside, I could rewrite this as secant of pi x quantity cubed. Outside would be an x cubed. Take the derivative of the outside, that's 3x squared. Of course, you leave the inside alone, times the derivative of the next innermost piece would be the secant. So it's secant x tangent x times the derivative of the innermost piece, which is the pi x, that is pi. Now, this is not great, and I do not want to take the derivative of this as I see it. I have a product of three things. So this is where simplification is very, very important. You multiply the 3 and the pi, I have Two secant square, uh, secant pi x's I can multiply by this one to make a third secant pi x. And now I can take the derivative of this to get my second derivative and I would have to use the product rule. I can leave the three pi on the side. I can make this my first piece and this my second piece. And let's see what would this would look like. Second derivative would be three pi the derivative of my first piece, I would have to use the chain rule. 3 secant squared pi x times secant pi x tangent pi x. Times pi times g. plus the derivative of g, derivative of tangent pi x would be secant squared pi x times pi times f. This is nasty, and this would all be multiplied by 3 pi, but let's see if we can simplify it a little bit. I have another 3 pi. I have that third secant I have two tangents, and here I have a pi and five secants. And I could probably factor out the secants, but I don't think it would help us that much. Okay? So, second derivatives. Next question, determine the x values for which f of x, which is equal to 2 cos x plus sine 2x, has a horizontal tangent. So, it's the old problem where we're trying to find when the slopes of my tangents are equal to 0. So, I'm going to take the derivative to get my slope generator, set that equal to 0, and solve. f prime is negative 2 sine x, so you don't have to do any crazy rules for 2 cos x. Just a constant times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. Now, for sine 2x, you'd have to take the derivative of sine, which is cosine 2x times 2. Set that equal to 0. Well, this is tough. I have sine and cosine at the same time. I wonder if this question even works. Let's see. Uh, there we go. Okay. I'm going to move the sign to the other side, see if that helps anything. So 
divide by 2, I'm going to try to figure out when cosine of 2x is equal to sine of x. So let me think about some values here, like pi over 6. Does 2 times pi over 6, which is pi over 3, equal the sine of pi over 6? So is the cosine of pi over 3 equal to the sine of pi over 6? My guess is, yeah, because we're talking about a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So just cosine of pi over 3, that's 1 half. The sine of pi over 6, that is 1 half. So that works. Pi over 6 works. I don't think there's any way to solve this algebraically. It's almost just kind of guess and check. So, I mean, we could try pi over 3. This would not be the same. Um, 2 pi over 3, cosine and sine for the pi over 3s are never the same. So I'm thinking pi over 6s. Let's look at pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. The cosine of pi is negative 1, so that doesn't work. Close, though. So. Maybe it's just a pi over 6. Like 5 pi over 6 would be... Five pi over three. Oh, this works. Sine of five pi over six is a half. Cosine of five pi over three is also a half. So let's see if seven pi over six and eleven pi over six works. So it ended up being. 7 pi over 3. Sine of 7 pi over 6 is negative a half. Cosine is, so that's, that'd be a positive a half. That doesn't work. And then 11 pi over 6. I might be missing some too, but you get the idea. That's a tough problem, and it comes down to just kind of guessing and checking, as I don't think of. I don't think of, can't think of any algebraic way to solve that. All right, table problems. So I'm given a bunch of information. I'm asked to find the derivative of f of g when x equals 2. Well, you have to now apply the chain rule to write down the derivative of this. So the derivative is f of g of x times g prime of x. And then I'd have to plug in 2 to find f of f prime of g of 2 times g prime of 2. Well, here we go. Now I'm going to work inside out to figure out what f prime of g of 2 is. So I'd have f prime of g of 2 is 3. Then the problem is what is f prime of 3? That's 4 times g prime of 2, that's negative 2, I get negative 8. Okay? Let's see what happens if I try g of f of x. So the derivative of g is g prime of f of x times f prime of x. Plug in 2, so it would be g prime of f of 2 times f prime of 2. So f of 2 is negative 3. This is g prime of negative 3. And this is f prime of 2. g prime of negative 3 is 2. f prime of 2 is 6. That's 12. Okay. Interesting type of table problem using the chain rule. Let's do a couple more. So of course, we could have uh, graphs. Let's go ahead and skip this. Let's go to this guy. 
So it asks us to find the derivative of the square root of f of x when x is 4. This is a chain rule problem. Okay? The outside is the square root. The inside is the function f of x. So the derivative of this is actually 1 half f of x, so the inside being left alone, to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside. Chain rule. Plug in 4 everywhere. Maybe I'll rewrite this. 1 over 2 root 4, uh, root f of 4, times f prime of 4. f of 4 is 7. Oh, that's great. So I got 1 over 2 root 7 times f prime of 4 is negative 1. So I get negative 1 over 2 root 7 which you can rationalize if you want, or if you don't want to, you don't have to. It's be negative root 7 over 14. You have to be prepared to rationalize sometimes. And let's look at this. Find the derivative of g of x cubed minus 2 plus 3. This g of x cubed, we have to use the chain rule. It's not 3g of x squared only. It's the derivative of the outside, which would be 3g of x squared, times the derivative of the inside. Then I would have the derivative of 2x, which is minus 2. And then I'd have to figure out what this stuff is at 4. So this over here. So 3 times g of 4 squared times g prime of 4 minus 2. g of 4 is 3. So 3 times 3 squared, that's 27. Times g prime of 4, well, that's just 0. So my answer is just minus 2. OK? There will be some functions that you might want to rewrite uh, to use the chain rule instead of using the quotient rule. So whenever we have a constant over some function, I can rewrite this as x plus 2 to the negative first power. This guy can be rewritten to be negative 3 times the quantity 3x squared plus 2 to the negative first power. Now, if you use the chain rule, you bring down the negative 1, subtract 1, the derivative of the outside is that, times the derivative of the inside. Well, I could rewrite that to be just negative 1 over x plus 2 squared. That might be easier than using the quotient rule. I'm not sure. It's really up to personal preference. Uh, let's try this one. I'd multiply the negative 3 by the negative 1 to be 3. Leave the inside alone. Subtract 1 as I'm taking the derivative. That's negative 2. Times the derivative of the inside. That's 6x. And then maybe I can rewrite it. f prime of x is equal to 18x over the quantity 3x squared plus 2 squared. Okay, so maybe it's an easier way to use the quotient rule, and maybe you don't have to use the quotient rule at all. Take these. I could rewrite this as negative 3 times negative 2x plus 5 to the negative fourth power. I could rewrite this as 2x times x squared plus 2 to the negative second power. Okay, and then if you choose to do the product rule, I mean, you'd have to do the product rule here, so I don't know if the product rule is easier than the quotient rule. It's up to you, but using this chain rule can be very val valuable. And I'd probably prefer to do this problem this way, um, the chain rule way, and this guy as well, instead of the quotient rule way. Uh, but it's personal preference. Okay? All right. Uh, I hope the homework goes well, and hope this helped. Thanks.